higher. Now, when we are living in the virtual world, when things are going digital, when everything, work, education, everything is going digital, then why don't our documentation should also be saved in the digital form? So here we have the right platform that is Campus, Campus Canvas, where it gives us the facility to upload all the documents, all the information related to the faculty at one place. So how we use this, we simply have to log into our campus Canvas accounts. Once we log into our campus Canvas account, we have the option of my details. Now here the first question, which uh, when I was exploring this came in my mind, what kind of data am I supposed to upload over here? So basically all the data, all the quantitative data related to the research, publication, book, chapters, seminars, membership for every faculty can be uploaded here. Now, this is the platform. So can I upload the past data also over here? So the answer which I got was yes, I can upload past 20 years data also, but for net accreditation purpose, only the assessment year data will be used. Now, what is the assessment period? Now, assessment period uh, varies from one accreditation to the next uh, to the next accreditation, and basically, the accreditation period is of five years. Now, what all things we can upload over here is first we will just search for uh, just go to the first option that is research publication. Any research work the faculty have done in the organization can be uploaded over here. The two ways of uploading, we can go for bulk upload and let's see what is add new publication. Now, add new publication is asking us to fill in the following details. That is, okay, I'll write the title of the paper, the journal name, journal link, ISSN number, article link, and the year of publication. Yeah, it would have come into your mind that why, I'm, why they are asking for the year of publication. Same thought came in my mind. The reason is, they have to check whether it is related to the current assessment year or not. And it should, is it listed in UGC? That also you have to mention. Once you click on submit, you will be able to see your research publication work and the research publication option. Now here for bulk upload, they have given us a sample file. We can simply download the sample file. We can fill on in all the details and we can upload that file there. As you know, it is for the neck accreditation purpose. So everything, which whatever we are mentioning, needs some supporting documents. Here also, they need some supporting documents like link of that article, the link of the journal website. Along with that, they also need the screenshot of the research article, which clearly shows the title of the article, affiliation, name of the journal, year of publication and the author's name. Along with that, they also need the data template against each paper, whatever they have mentioned over here. Now with this, the second thing, second detail which we can fill is related to the patents. Now in patents, uh, I think they just ask us about only three details which we have to mention, that is the title, the patent number and the year of publication. Once we click on submit, it will be shown under uh, my details patent option. And here we just have to submit one copy that is e-copy of the letter of award or patent and the current status. That's what uh, is required to support as a supporting document for patents. Next option we have is book chapter. Now here book chapter means uh, we have to upload data related to the any book or chapter which our faculty members have done. Just make sure all these data should be done by your own faculty members. Only those data we have to upload. Now, if I click on add new, so here we will get, we have to write the title of the book, paper title, proceeding title, ISSN or ISBN number. Now, what is ISSN number? ISSN number is basically related to the research paper and ISBN number is given for the 
books and chapters. So whenever we are writing books or chapter for that purpose, we have to give the ISBN number along with the name of the publisher, the year of publication and affiliated to current institution. Is the college affiliated to the current institution or not? That also we have to mention. Once we click on submit, it will be seen under my details, books and chapters. Now for books and chapters, again, we need some supporting documents like e-copy of the cover page, content page, and the first page of publication. Now on first page of uh, publication, there should be ISBN number, the year of publication of the book, and the conference proceedings. These should be mentioned on the first page what we are submitting. Along with that, we also need the web link of the research paper by the title author. Next thing which we can update over here is projects. If we have done any kind of projects, if we have done any kind of field trips, so those should be added over here, add the project. Now, when we are doing the project, we all know that some fund will be required. So we might have got some fund sanction, some agency have funded us. So for that, we have to write the details about the project. The funding is an agency. The fund which was sanctioned, duration and months, the type, which type of uh, fund was sanctioned, that it was government or non-government agency and the year of award. With this, we also need one supporting document and the supporting document here is e-copy of the grant award letter for research projects. So that e-copy is required. And last thing, very important, that is, that is seminar and membership. Our faculty keep on attending different seminars and they might be member with some other organization also. So here we have to add those details, details as in the title, duration for which the seminar was there, the amount received, if they have received any kind of amount from the financial, from the college for attending those seminars and the membership in any other professional organization that also those details are also required along with the year. But this, for the supporting document, we just need one thing that is the certificate of participation in the workshop or seminars. Once we get that, that is enough. We do not need any other documents for the workshop and seminars. So this way we can collect, we can save all our data at one place so that when we will go for accreditation, when a cycle will complete, it will be very easy to access all the data and to find the accreditation. Thank you.